Indonesia has launched its long-awaited Jakarta-Bandung high-speed commercial railway. More than seven years after construction began, Southeast Asia's first high-speed rail line called Wush is running bullet trains at speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour. The project was completed with help from China as part of Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. The 7.3 billion US dollar project connects the Indonesian capital Jakarta to Bandung in West Java. It aims to ease chronic traffic problems in the two cities, which according to Indonesia's president, have cost the country over 8.9 billion US dollars in annual economic losses. Dan kita tidak boleh takut belajar dan mencoba hal-hal yang baru. Dan dalam proses itu bisa muncul hal-hal yang tidak terduga. Kesulitan, kesulitan di lapangan, masalah-masalah dan ketidaksempurnaan. Pengalaman itu mahal, namun sangat berharga dan kita tidak perlu takut karena jika kita konsisten, kesalahan itu akan semakin sedikit. During a test ride in Jakarta on September 6, Chinese Premier Li Chang hailed the project as a good example of regional cooperation between developing countries. The 142.3-kilometer journey cuts travel time between the cities from 3.5 hours to just 40 minutes. Planners say the line will eventually operate 68 daily trips, carrying around 31,000 passengers. The widely anticipated railway project, though, has not been without controversies. One involved the location of the stations, which are not in the Bandung city center. Instead, the line has stops at Padalarang and Tegelawar, which are around 20 kilometers and 17 kilometers from the Bandung city center, respectively. Planners deliberately chose the sites to avoid construction challenges that would have driven up costs. As a result, high-speed rail commuters have to hop on a 20-minute feeder train to get to Bandung city center. Another issue is the cost for passengers. After a few weeks of free rides, Passengers will reportedly have to pay around 250,000 rupiah for a one-way ticket. The fare is a significant amount, considering the monthly minimum wage in Jakarta is 4.9 million rupiah. Regular trains on the route only cost 120,000 rupiah. Funding was also controversial. To complete the Jakarta-Bandung line, Indonesia had to use state funds, which President Widodo had vowed not to do. So I think it's very, very expensive. If the government said we'll support the tourism, I think many of the passengers will choose another transport, another alternative route, instead of using high-speed railway. So the government either let this happen, which is the low passenger rate, and it will be burden for the state-owned enterprise, or the government give subsidies. Initially set to be operational by 2019, the project was plagued by problems with land resumption and construction delays during the pandemic. A new 2022 deadline was meant to coincide with the G20 summit with plans for President Widodo and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping to preside over the inauguration. But that target, along with others, were missed, leading to the four-year delay. The 6 billion US dollar project saw costs overrun by 1.3 billion, forcing Jakarta to take out an additional 560 million dollars in loans from China. If the project is previously commercial one, it shouldn't be any involvement from the state budget because if involvement any involvement with the state budget, it absorbs a lot of the taxpayer money. So we could say that the high speed railway project, which is very, very expensive, is kind of a debt trap strategy. Even before the railway was launched, Indonesian and Chinese officials were already discussing the possibility of extending the high-speed rail to Indonesia's second biggest city, Surabaya, which is around 700 kilometers from Jakarta. Mereka 
pengalaman dia sudah 41 ribu kilometer buat kereta api cepat, saya kira perlu dapat cepat. With the high-speed rail finally on track, all eyes will be on the future operation of the high-profile project and its commercial viability.